This video is on graphing rational functions, part two. To begin or to continue our discussion on graphing rational functions, we need to talk about domain and range. Most of you may need a refresher. Remember that domain is all possible values of x and range is all possible values of y. Domain isn't just x, range isn't just y. Please be careful that it's not just what you see on the graph or just the x's you are given, but all possible ones for a particular function. So when we're looking at domain and range of rational functions, we need to think about what's happening with our x's. Well, we go all the way, since there's arrows on the ends, to the right and all the way to the left. And so domain includes all real numbers, which there's a symbol for. It's a capital R with a double line in the beginning. This means all real numbers. Remember that a real number is anything that isn't imaginary. So every number you've ever learned about, excluding anything that contains i, the imaginary number i, is a real number. There is, however, one real number in the case of this graph that is not included in the domain. Can you tell what it is? Well, we have an asymptote at x is equal to 2. And that's because our graph approaches but never touches the value x equals 2, which means that is excluded, not equal to, 2 for our domain. So all real numbers except 2 is our domain. Now for our range, the same type of thing is going to happen. Our graphs have arrows on the ends. Our range is all y's up to positive infinity, all y's down to negative infinity. So it's all real numbers, but something is excluded here too because we have a horizontal asymptote. What value of y is excluded because of this horizontal asymptote? I hope you said zero. It might help for you to write the equations of your asymptotes and then use those as the restrictions to your domain, all real numbers, except that. Think about it. This vertical asymptote goes through the x-axis, and we wrote our equation as x equals the place where it goes through the x-axis, 2. This horizontal line, I know it's laying on the x-axis, but it's passing through the y-axis, and that's what we're looking at. And it passes through the y-axis at 0. And so those are the equations of my two asymptotes, x equal to 2 means my domain is all real numbers except where x is equal to 2. y equals 0 means my range is all real numbers except where y is equal to 0. So our asymptotes provide our domain and range restrictions. There are rules for horizontal asymptotes and to follow them we're going to look at the degree of the numerator and the denominator. And so this is sort of my made up notation. Be careful, that's not sort of commonly um, written notation. This is the degree of the numerator. So capital N is numerator, capital D is denominator. D, degree of denominator. The symbol is less than. So if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0 automatically. Let's look at the degrees in this example. The degree of the numerator is 1 because the highest exponent is 1. The degree of the denominator is 2. Because 1 is less than 2, y equals 0 is the horizontal asymptote. And I often use HA for horizontal asymptote. So another choice would be when the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator. And in that case, the ratio of the leading coefficients, LC, leading coefficients, is the horizontal asymptote. 
Now that sounds more difficult than it actually is. So let's take a look. Because the degree is one in both cases, we use our leading coefficients, two on the top and one on the bottom. Two over one is the ratio since the degrees are equal. So our horizontal asymptote is y is equal to 2, which is just 2 over 1 simplified. Okay? And so you basically just pick the numbers out of the front. So let's look at the last scenario. This is what will happen if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. In that case, we're going to have to use longer synthetic division. We will be able to ignore the remainder. I'm not going to use this one as an example because it's actually a more complicated example than is necessary. But you should know that if the numerator's degree, which is 3 in this case, is bigger than the degree of the denominator, we'll have to do the division to find the horizontal asymptote. So the way that you would set it up is x to the third minus 8 divided by x squared plus 5x plus 6. And we're not going to do it now, but you would have to set it up filling in the holes and doing the long division. I promise I won't give you one that's this complicated to do when you do have to apply that. So let's look at vertical asymptotes now. Vertical asymptotes, VA, come from the domain restrictions. Let's think about what that means. A fraction, any fraction, has certain restrictions. Any fraction is not allowed to have a denominator of zero. And we're going to use that to help us with the domain. Because if this denominator is equal to zero, that will be where the vertical asymptote or asymptotes exist. Well, how do we solve this equation? I hope you see that in this case it's quadratic, and so this equation gets solved by factoring. I can use the shortcut, since I have a leading coefficient of 1, and I get x minus 6, x plus 1. We make our mini equations, and we solve them. And so x equals 6 and x equals negative 1 are our solutions. Those solutions are our vertical asymptotes. Take a look at the graph of this rational function. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals 6 right here and x equals negative 1 right here. So those are our vertical asymptotes. All right. So to find the vertical asymptotes, take your denominator, set it equal to zero, and whatever kind of equation it is, solve it appropriately. There will be cases where there is what's called a hole. This is also called a point of discontinuity. We call a function continuous if the line or curve travels along smoothly without any leaps or jumps or spaces in it. It is discontinuous if there is an excluded point or a jump in the graph. And in this case, the hole is indicated by an open circle. That means we're including every point on this line except for the one that's shown. So I want to show you what an equation looks like when there's a hole in the graph. We're going to use this example here. If you look at that example, I have it broken down so that the numerator got factored, which is x minus 2x plus 1, and the denominator is just x minus 2. Well, normally, based on our last slide, we'd say that there was a vertical asymptote where that denominator is equal to zero. 
that would give us x equals 2. But look at what happens here. Once we factor, the x minus 2s actually cancel out. And this is linear. We have the equation of a line, and you can see it graphed here. So the line is graphed, but because this factor canceled, hidden in this original equation is the fact that there is a hole. Anytime something cancels, a hole exists where that piece of the equation equals zero. So there is a hole at x equals two. We use that and we plug it into our simplified equation to find the value of y for that hole. All right, so here's what I mean. If x is 2 at the whole, we take that 2, we plug it in to our simplified version, which is x plus 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. The point 2, 3 is where the hole is, and so you would draw it that way. This takes a little practice. Keep in mind that when you factor, if there is anything that can be canceled, the whole will exist where that piece gets canceled. So in this case, x minus 2 canceled, set it equal to 0, solve it. The whole is where x is equal to 2. If nothing cancels from your original problem when you factor and simplify, if nothing cancels, there is no whole. You don't have to worry about it. You would say, if you were asked if there was a whole, you would say no. Here's an example um, of a function with and without a whole. And I'm showing you this because you'll see that if you look at this equation, it looks complicated. And somehow we have the same graph for this equation, which looks quite simple. Well, I want you to look at this equation and factor. If we factor the numerator, we get x minus 2x plus 2. And if we factor the denominator, we get x plus 3, x plus 2. And I hope you notice that the x plus 2s cancel. And if you look at what's left here, it is exactly the same as this function. So the graph will look exactly the same. The only difference will be that hidden within this function is a whole. Because x plus 2s canceled, x plus 2 equals 0, x equals negative 2. Their whole exists. The function is not defined at negative 2. So if you plug negative 2 back into the simplified version here, your y value will be negative 4, and that's why you see a hole here. Whereas here, there is no hole. Nothing canceled, no hole. Other than that, these functions look exactly the same on a graph. We're not going to deal with slant asymptotes until after midterms, but I do want you to see what it looks like and that there is an equation of that line, the diagonal. Um, you can have vertical, horizontal, and slant asymptotes. This is what an equation would look like as an example. You will see some problems in your packet where you're matching equations that have slant asymptotes with their graphs, so you should know what they look like. I want to do one complete example here, and it looks like I won't have a lot of time. So I'm going to pause the video myself, make some notes. You should fill in and try any that you can on your own, and then come back and you will quickly see the answers and a summary screen. Here are the solutions and explanation. Pause the video to take these in. And here is your summary. I'm also going to put up quickly a picture of the graph of that last equation so that you can see what it looks like. We'll do more of these in class. Good luck.